Hey everybody, it's Holly from Get Your Skin Out. So, as uh, some of you may know, I am doing UVB treatment and today is my final treatment, 30 sessions. Uh, when I started this, I did a vlog, much to my horror, about what you can expect when you're doing your UVB treatment. So I thought I'd do another one today to summarise how my journey's gone and what you should expect. The normal protocol when you come and get treatment is that you arrive and depending on your time in the morning, I always come in the morning around 10 or 9.30, is that you don't come with any perfumes or creams, moisturisers, makeup. You will come in, you'll get undressed and your healthcare professionals, the nurses, will come in and assess your skin. When I started this treatment, they assessed me as a skin type 2. I'm fairly kind of pale and Irish. Per treatment, you then increment your dose depending on how your skin reacts after each treatment. Um, this treatment I've had this treatment about four to five times before um, my skin's been quite sensitive uh, so it's been quite an interesting journey so I've had 30 sessions total today is my last one um, and along the way we've kind of agreed that we increment each dose by 5% you can actually increment up to 20% but my skin would always kind of get a bit burnt now after each treatment it is normal that your skin will might be a bit red and you kind of feel a bit burnt but it usually goes down the next day if it doesn't it's totally worth flagging with your nurses that actually you know what you feel a bit tight you fit, feel a bit sore a couple of times throughout this treatment that's happened to me but I come in anyway and they check my skin and we make sure and we make a joint decision about what's going to be best whether to increment on a lower dose repeat the dose or not treat and come next time uh, I've been coming three days a week every Monday Wednesday Friday uh, you cannot treat the same days back to back so you can do a Monday and a Tuesday for example you have to have those rest days so before each treatment as I said you get undressed they check your skin and this is a routine procedure for every single thing that you do you also get asked a series of questions the same questions which can be so annoying because you make such a relationship with your nurse you're thinking they always know the answers but it's worth checking and it's worth being consistent so this is the assessment the healthcare professionals, usually your nurse, does on each uh, treatment. It's divided into two sections. The first six you'll see uh, a kind of uh, a checkup since your last one. So your name, has anything changed? My answer is always no. And then the bottom, seven to twelve, is uh, where you should be standing and what you should be wearing uh, in the machine. So this is the DQLI test. This is the... Uh, Dermatology Life Quality Index. So when you start your treatment, you have to do one of these. Uh, it asks you all sorts of questions that kind of look into how psoriasis affects your life and it looks at the wider picture kind of beyond the skin. Uh, now, personally, I think these are super outdated. I've actually spoken to dermatologists who say that they don't really check these. I think this is more of a, a note for anybody doing this, that if you look at these questions and you think, shit, I answered very much to all of them and therefore psoriasis does affect you that you need to be the one to bring up with the nurses at your treatment to tell your dermatologist that you need further assistance. That might be some sort of mindfulness therapy, uh, you know, anything to help your mental health or maybe you need a support group, you need to speak to other people that live with psoriasis, you know, you have to be the one to raise that. So we're going to do an example of what the UVB machine looks like. This is yeah. not a, a test on my skin type, this is just an example. So they input a dose, I can't actually see it with the doors open but you can see there'll be a blue light and I stand in that and anybody getting UVB treatment or PUVA is similar and you'd go in there with goggles and goggles and a visor and then it stops, it beeps and then you come out. That's so this is the inside of the UVB machine. Um, you can see there's a step there. That step is removable depending on your height and where you've got your psoriasis. So for example, if you were kind of average height, short, and you had it on your ankles, you'd stand on this step so that the kind of bulbs can make sure that they are getting the area. Inside, you'll see on the poles, they're marked with kind of a yellow and a blue. So I actually hold onto the blue with the step. And this is to ensure that you're standing in the same position every time so that at each treatment level, you are getting the same application of light. So a part of your routine, as I said, is you, you wear goggles uh, and or a visor. So about halfway through this treatment, for me, about 15, um, we switched to splitting my dose, which in all the sessions I've had before, I've never actually done that. It was because my face kept reacting and kept burning past the kind 
kind of being a little bit red after day one. So what we decided to do is kind of uh, repeat a dose that my face worked with my face and then increase the body. Once you start getting your treatment, your psoriasis starts to clear, that's quite a relatively quick process for me and I'd probably say within about a week, so about seven treatments, uh, my skin really started to flatten and show. Um, unlike previous treatments I've had, like Poover, my skin uh, kind of hyperpigmentation didn't show, it just went back to normal. I'm quite lucky in that sense that I don't get um, the marks that I know a lot of people do, and I have previously with other treatments, be it creams or systemics. Um, it's really important that you moisturise. I know that's such a general term that a lot of healthcare professionals use, just go moisturise, moisturise. But actually it's really important because you think, if you think of this being on the beach or for those who've tried sunbed in the past to help, you know, if you are burning, you really need to hydrate your skin. Um, when I'm in the hospital, I use Cetraban because it's what they've got available here. They've got a, another couple of creams, but I find that works best for me. And then usually after treatment, uh, at the end of the night before I go to bed, I'll probably have a quick shower and then moisturise with coconut oil I find that's the most hydrating for my skin so I'm about to go in for my last treatment 30 sessions so I always have my hair in this position so it's kind of even I am naked and then I put these goggles on you can see previously where these marks I look like I've been punched in the face but actually this is just kind of a tan line um, but the benefit of wearing these I'll put them on so you can see what they look like attractive is that uh, it stops the light penetrating your eyes if the light penetrates your eyes you are more likely to get cataracts so these are really important they're so annoying because as you start to get a tan as I said you get kind of these marks here and a line here um, but it's really important that you wear them a minute and 30 seconds first then it will be I'll open the door and then I'll get my visor and put my visor on like this and then I stand in the machine get the second dose which is about 40 seconds I'm wearing the visor and it stops the light penetrating my face where previously it's reacted to such a stronger dose um, but as I said I'm only incrementing about five percent at a time on the whole I think things that make my skin worse is if I'm tired maybe I'll burn a bit more uh, definitely if it's that time of the month I notice I can burn quite quickly but on the whole it's quite consistent about working and incrementing each time but you really have to assess this for your own skin type with your healthcare professional have that conversation every single day because your body changes you know things happen it's worth about being open and you know not comparing your treatment to anybody else's uh, you can use it as a standard of what you should expect when you're getting treatment but you know what I'm saying might not work for you so it's really worth checking it out a lot of people out there who are maybe on systemics or biologics or other medications for other health things is can you actually have UVB treatment um, and the answer is yes but you might have to go through that additional step to make sure they actually have this long list in the hospital where they check what you're on and then they look and see what they recommend so some of the recommendations they've told me this morning is that they advise you on an hour gap to take the medication before coming into your treatment um, if you're on multiple medications they refer you back to a dermatologist not to get discharged but to figure out a plan about when you can take them and then also have treatment it can be really awkward getting UVB treatment because you are naked and at one time you can have a couple of people in the room especially when they're student nurses so I've been having treatment since uh, the beginning of November we're now in February so it's four months of treatment uh, it is a commitment it is three days a week you know there is no time off it's, it's really difficult to fit in against work if you've got kids whatever your situation is it is a commitment but many times when I've been here I've wanted to talk to a dermatologist for more help or ask for more um, kind of psychology and mental health and they can refer you or put a note to direct your dermatologist so that you get those additional services if you wish and you think that you need them so I have gut psoriasis I've had 30 sessions I started in November, it's now February. I started probably about almost 100% coverage. So that was from my scalp, my face, my arms, all over my back, my torso, my legs, my bum, my genitals, everything, you name it, and it was absolutely there. And extremely sore and extremely painful. Very red, very flaky, and extremely itchy. Um, so today's the 30th session, and I'm pretty much clear. I've got one or two stubborn bits on my legs, but as a whole, I'm relatively clear. So for anybody out there who is living with psoriasis, whatever type you have, gut ache or plaque or whatever, this could be a good option for you. You absolutely can get more information about it and access to it. First you see your GP, 
then get referred to a dermatologist and your dermatologist will give you this information. It is quite expensive, so I think a lot of people are reluctant to do it, but it has huge benefits for clearing. As I said, for me, it gives me a nice couple of months of remission. For other people I know have tried it, have definitely uh, had longer. So it's worth checking out. There are uh, elements that you need to consider, as I said, burning and possible skin cancer but I think if you're doing it safely and effectively you should be okay and with the help of the NHS and the nurses uh, you really create a strong partnership and the most important thing is starting a conversation having an open conversation about how you can live well with psoriasis so get your skin out.